okay, so now you have an album that goes four times platinum. Are yeah. you still under the same EMI deal during this time? Yeah, man. So, so they're taking I'm their that, piece. I'm, on, I'm under that deal, but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm about to be out of that deal, and we about to go to the bank real soon. Okay. Real soon. Was the money starting to pour in, really, yeah. at this point? Yeah, because I was producing. So, like, your producer fees start to change. Hmm. You know, you go from the, you know, in the beginning, you're getting a couple grand to produce a song, and then you start getting up to the thirty, thirty-five thousand dollar range. Right. And next thing you know, you know, you're working. Once you get the number one consistently, now you're getting into the six figure producer range. So it's like, so I started, so publishing money takes time to come in. Yeah. You got to wait a year and a half to see your first royalty check. Mm -hmm. That's just the facts of it. So you got to hopefully be producing and making producer money. Get to, that upfront money. Yeah. So, right. so that was my, my focus was like, man, I'm going to be producing everything and I can, yo, send them to me, send them to me, send the artists to me, who you got. I don't care if they knew, established, don't matter, send them to me. And I would be like, yo, I'm just going to rack up. Okay. Now you bought everything for your, you bought the house and the bins for your parents. Were you starting to splurge on yourself by this time? Of course. <laughs> what was like the biggest purchase during that era? I mean, it, I think I was like, maybe right after that, like I got into like Bentleys and Lamborghinis and stuff. Okay. Like my first car was a Mercedes Benz. I think that's probably everybody thinks you I get a Mercedes Benz. Right. I remember my first, I'm sorry, my first car was actually a Lexus. And I remember because Puff dissed me, he was in the elevator. He was like, yo, what you drive? And I said, <laughs> I got a Lexus. He's like, oh, you're not doing it yet till you get a Benz. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, I'm thinking I'm doing that. I got a GS300. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like 18 years old with a GS300. Right. I think I'm doing it. Oh. Uh, but yeah, like I started, you know, that was the old me. I, I was getting into like jewelry. I was, you know, at Jacob the Jewelers every week. Every, I was, I was at the, I had like, I had like um, the the Benz dealership, like they, like you know, speed dial. Like I would go there, and they were like order like dinner for me because they knew I was coming. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I was, I was, I was, you know, I was, I was young, and I was a kid that was having fun, and or at least thinking that I was doing something great yeah. at the time by. By spending money when that, in actuality, all I was doing was giving it away. Because at that point, you you learn later on that like the cars that you're buying is literally depreciating. That's yep. second you take it off the lot. The custom jewelry worthless. Stuff is worthless, man. right? Like, yeah. Once you ice out that watch, it's not worth anything. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've worn an iced out watch in over fifty, maybe probably about twelve years. I stopped wearing yeah diamond stuff because it's just worthless exactly yeah exactly and then by 1998 billboard magazine said you were one of the hottest r&b producers in the country and then the next year they said the same thing hmm. 